in the last video, we talked about how to build this card class. And if we're going to build a memory game, we need a whole deck of cards so we can choose from. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build this other class over here called a deck of cards. And you can see our deck has one instance variable and it's an array list of card objects. So array lists are wonderful. They're, they're a collection. It's a type of list that can hold multiple objects. So let's go into our, um, our program here and I just, just occurred to me, I better put this on GitHub. So if you want to see my source code, you can. So I'll go to version control system, share project on GitHub. I'll make it public so anyone can access it. Takes a second sometimes. And we'll add all those files. Okay, so now we'll create the deck of cards class. And we'll add that to GitHub as well. So the deck of cards, that's our class name. So now we need our instance variable called deck and it's an array list of type card. So we'll say private array list type card deck. And we'll add in our constructor. And we actually don't need to pass anything into the constructor. Our constructor will be a new array list. Okay, so this is just an empty collection at this point in time. And then what I need to do is I need to create a bunch of card objects and add them into my deck. So there's a couple different strategies you could you could use for this. So I could say deck add new card and I could do spades uh, two and I could duplicate this and then go to three and I could go four and I could do that 52 times but the problem with that is it's actually quite error prone and it's really lengthy it's much better if we can just loop over top of all of the face names and all of the suits and have this thing build it itself so lucky enough for us we already created methods in the card class that return all of the face names and all of the suits. So we'll just use those existing methods. So um, we'll create a list of a string called suits. And we can say card get valid suits. And we'll get the face names. So now we have a list with all of the suits and all of the face names. So what we're going to do is just loop over top of them. So I'm going to do a simple for loop here. And you may be familiar, depending on, on how you've learned things, you may be familiar with this style of a for loop where you say i equals zero, i is less than, say, suits dot size, i plus plus. And what that would do is it would count from zero, we have four suits, so it'd go zero, one, two, three. And what you would then be able to do if you wanted to print them is you would say like suits get, you know, whatever, whatever's in position I. I'm not a super fan of this style for a couple of reasons. One, it, um, you know, you do have the potential to get uh, index out of bounds exceptions. Like if you accidentally put uh, equals in there, <laughs> that'll cause you some grief. Um, and this suits.get, it doesn't really describe what I'm getting. The style of for loop that I like is one where we specify on this side, uh, the collection that we want to loop over top of. And on this side, we're defining each, sorry about that, each time through the loop, what kind of object are we gonna have? It's a string, right? So the suits list contains string objects. So each time through the loop, I'll get a string object and I'm gonna call it suit. So the first time through, it would be, you know, I forget the order we did it, but hearts and then spades and, and whatnot. So this is a little easier to read, isn't it? Print out suit. So let's just 
again, playing with our little experiment class here, if I say deck of cards, and I run that, it'll call the constructor, and we're going to get all the suits printed out, right? So there's our suits. Maybe we'll do this. make our, our display a little easier to, to see what we're getting. Okay. So <clears throat> in our deck of cards class, that's pretty, pretty easy to read. So if inside the for loop, I create another for loop, if I say for, and I can get the face name. Okay. So I'll loop over all of the suits and then I'm going to loop over all the face names. And <clears throat> if I were to say uh, here, uh, print new I can create a new card object and display it. You can see it'll create, we get to our building a deck of cards, it goes two of hearts, three of hearts, four of hearts, all the way through until it runs out of face names and then it goes to diamonds, which is the next suit. You can also see this if in, in slow motion. If we put a, uh, a little breakpoint here and I click on the debugger and I'm going to step into, when you're using the debugger in IntelliJ, there's two, two main options, step over and step into. If you say step over, it just executes that line of code. If you say step into, then it takes you into it. So I'll say step into, and I'll kind of click over these. And what's really cool about the debugger is now I can look at you know that list of suits, hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades. I can see all my face names. And when I step over this first line, it says the suit is hearts, right? It's so the first time through, it's gonna be hearts. And when I step over this one, I can see the face name is two. And it would have now created like the two of hearts and printed it to the console. And when I come back around, click over it. Now we're looking at the number three. And again, it would create now the three of hearts and it would keep going. I'm not gonna push it 52 times. Hopefully, hopefully you get the point here. So we've got this list that can hold card objects. And we've got the ability to create new card objects. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say deck add new card and pass in the suit and the face name. So now it'll create 52 card objects and add them to my deck. And if we go, yeah, That's our constructor. Just trying to think of a nice way we can display this um, in our experiment here. Let's add another line. So if I run into debugger again, I'll step over uh, the constructor. So now I have this deck. You can see it's a deck of cards object. If I expand it, you can see it has a size of 52. If I expand that, I can see in position zero is a card object. That's the two of hearts. If I expand that, I can see my heart or my card uh, instance variables. So you see how it, it gives you all that structure so nicely and so fast, so easy. Okay, so let's keep building this out. Uh, so a deck of cards, you get it out of the box, all the cards are in order, you gotta shuffle it up. So it's wonderfully easy to do that. Say this method will shuffle the cards. Oh, 
I am in the wrong class. My apologies. There we go. So what happens now is the collections class already has a method called shuffle. We don't have to create it. It already will randomize the cards in our deck for us. So if, uh, if we go back to our experiment now and we say deck shuffle, so we call that shuffle method, and hit our debugger. We step over. So now we're looking at this, it hasn't run yet. So our cards at this point, they're all in order, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I step over the shuffle, now you can see the order of the cards has all changed. So once again, we've got this incredible functionality, nice and fast, uh, without much work. So the next one here is deal top card. So what this is gonna do is take the top, the, the card that's in position zero of the deck and return the card object. If there's no cards left in the deck, we're gonna return null. So we need to guard against that. We don't wanna accidentally um, try to access what's in position zero if there's nothing there. So we'll go to our deck of cards class and So it's a public, our return type is a card object and we're gonna call it deal top card. And we can say if the deck size is uh, greater than zero, return deck dot remove whatever's in position zero. And if the deck size is zero, then we're going to return Null. So null is like undefined, right? Um, you know, you might test for it uh, in your in your different classes. So here, instead of printing out a deck, uh, let's just print out the first five cards. Deck dot deal cop card. So. What we should see if we run this will basically uh, be <clears throat> if we were to have a hand of cards with five cards in it, we'd get King of Hearts, Two of Spades, Ace of Clubs, etc. If we run it again, we're going to get different cards because each time through we're shuffling the deck. Okay, so the last one we have here is get number of cards. Again, this one's not going to matter for our particular game. Uh, but it's pretty easy to do, so we'll just add it in. So it's always public, private, or protected. So who can access this? If it's public, any class can access it, as long as they have a deck of cards. Uh, so we're gonna say public int, and it's called get number of cards. And here we just have to return the deck size. Okay, so there we've built out our card class and our deck of card has card objects. So you'll often see this described as a has a relationship. Now, if you're following on the video series, I'm using GitHub to make all of my changes. So I'm gonna make a commit here and I'm gonna say update uh, we're actually able to say added deck of cards. And we'll commit and push. And if you want to access uh, my code at any point, you can go into github.com. Whoops. <laughs> And we'll go into our repositories here. And you can see there's a memory game. So at any point, if you click on that URL, it'll take you uh, right to the code base. And you can then go through and you can drill down to find the specific files. Or if 
you just watch the video on um, how to build a deck of cards, you can go to the commits and you can see there's, there's the method, or sorry, the commit message. And if you click on this, it shows you the exact code that we added. So you can copy and paste from here as well. So you've got lots of options. Uh, and if you're not familiar with GitHub, I encourage you to become familiar with it. It is an industry standard and very powerful. All right, in the next video, we're gonna create the, um, the, the memory card uh, class, which will be an extension of the card class.